Hello and welcome to this episode of Ask Raghav. Today we are going to discuss uh, four very common scenario based questions which can be asked in interviews and in general as well if you are doing automation testing you should have knowledge about these four basic scenarios. So here the first scenario is you are automating a login feature for a web application. How will you handle dynamic elements like captcha or OTP fields in your automation scripts? The second question is during test automation, you encounter an element that doesn't have unique attributes like a very specific property like ID, class name, etc. How would you locate and interact with that element? The fourth scenario, the third scenario is you are testing an e commerce website and you need to automate a scenario where a user adds multiple products to their cart. Now, how will you design and how will you execute, execute this test in automation? Then the fourth scenario is in agile project in agile development environment. How do you ensure that your automation script remain up to date as the application evolves with very frequent changes? So let us start with the very first scenario that you are automating a login feature of a web application. Now you have to handle some dynamic elements like captcha or OTP fields in your automation scripts. Now, whenever you get these kind of scenarios, whenever you are faced with these kind of questions, you must always remember that sometimes we have to do an analysis that what are the, what is the time effort we have to invest in automating something and what is the return on investment? Are there many scenarios which will get automated if you are able to automate some particular feature or functionality and if you are able to do that, how much effort you have to put in, then what is the investment and what is the return you are getting? Now things like captcha they are added so that they can discourage automation scripts or robots to uh, automatically handle and log into the application or go to the next page so if you are able to automate these things the entire uh, idea of having captcha will be lost so a lot of times we see whether it is really required and then we see what things we can do to handle captcha so to handle captcha you can just give me a minute all right so here you can say to handle elements like captcha or otp fields you can consider the following option you can request the dev team to disable captcha and otp in the test environment so that you do not have to face these and you can directly do automation then you can also see the possibility of uh, adding a hook to allow to bypass captcha or if you have some api that you can run and bypass captcha or add some uh, specific values to handle it you can work closely with the dev team and set a predefined otp for the test environment so that you can handle this kind of scenarios so always remember you do not have always to automate everything you have to analyze you have to see what can be automated what is the return on investment if some feature is taking huge effort time and effort to automate is it really worth it can you delegate it to manual uh, testing or not and how much automation will be possible if you are able to automate it and what are the other options available okay you can take a screenshot if you want coming to the next scenario during test automation you encounter an element does not have unique attribute how would you locate and interact with such an element and a very very common scenario in automation testing a lot of times you will find several elements or objects on the screen on the web page like a text box a image a radio button uh, any kind of uh, button or image or text area or anything on the web page that does not have have a very unique property like id name class etc in that case what you can do how you can locate it and it should also be stable and not brittle so here always remember that when we use uh, xpath or css selectors we have option of adding some custom functions some functions like contains starts with ends with all these things so you can create a relative xpath and also add functions like contains or starts with ends with you can also uh, create CSS selectors with these functions. You can use a combination of multiple functions as well. Uh, you can use the elements 
text content as well you can use the elements position in selenium 4 and many other tools you can also use position for of the elements and relative positions as well and then you can use a combination of all these above methods as well and a combination of functions as well and then at the end if you really see that there is uh it is going to be very brittle it can break uh you do not have a very very clear way to find or find the element and it is not very stable you can always talk to the dev team and have some unique properties added for those elements okay so this is how you should handle this kind of scenarios you can take a screenshot coming to scenario 3 you are testing an e-commerce website and you need to automate a scenario where a user adds multiple products to their cart how would you design and execute this test case efficiently now here whenever you are dealing with e-commerce website a ideal way an efficient way is to always have a separate test data that you can keep in a separate file excel file or maybe a separate from the test script so that you can use the test data efficiently so create test data set with various products to add then you can use a loop in your test script in your automation script to iterate through, through the products in the data set and then for each product navigate the products page navigate to the products page click the add to cart button and verify the item is added okay and then repeat the loop for each product so this is how you can you know create a test data and add loop in your scripts now after all the products are added go to the shopping cart page to verify the correct items are listed and also ensure the test environment is reset between test iterations to avoid interference now this thing you can do as a setup within your test script or as a tear down so you can use setup and tear down scripts as well so that the test data is generated and the earlier data is uh, you know removed and cleared so that you do not face any kind of interference and this is how you can handle this kind of a scenario okay if you have more ways if you have some more experience with this kind of scenario you can always let me know in the comment section i will read and reply to your comment and you can take a screenshot we will go to the next scenario the last one in an agile development environment how do you ensure that your automation scripts remain up to date as the application evolves with frequent changes now when we talk about agile agile projects here we have sprints and these are very quick uh, sprints like one week sprint two week sprint three week sprint so basically we develop and test our project or product in very short intervals and these are sprints like two week sprints one week sprint etc and then we have very frequent changes very frequent and very short release cycles so here we have a huge challenge of keeping our automation testing up to date with all the new changes and also testing all the changes all the new things that come in each sprint now here to keep your automation testing project and scripts up to date with the agile environment a very very important thing or i should say the most important thing is collaboration and communication so you should have a very clear very efficient collaboration and communication with all the teams the dev team the uh, net ops team networks team stakeholders business stakeholders uh, business analysts everyone so that you are informed of all the changes let me tell you a scenario let's say some very important new feature is coming up in the next sprint and if you have a very clear and efficient communication on this new feature with all the stakeholders you know that in your automation scripts in your automation project you will have to add a feature to handle this kind of a scenario and you can manage it if you know about it in advance before time and you will do all the things necessary to add that feature or add the scripts or add the feature to handle that kind of a scenario in your automation project therefore collaboration and communication is very important in an agile environment then version controlling so here uh, you should store your automation scripts in version control systems like git so you can track the changes and also if needed you can roll back again let me give you a scenario so it can happen very frequently in agile projects that 
a new feature is developed and released and due to some issue it has to be rolled back now in case you have made changes in your automation framework and scripts according to this feature and you also have to do the changes in your scripts or framework you should be able to do that very easily quickly and efficiently and therefore you should always use a version control system now continuous integration again very very important if you have to uh, you know work in an agile environment and you are doing automation you have to use continuous integration systems you have to use tools like jenkins and any ci cd pipeline tools and platforms so that you can run your tests automatically with each code change and if there are any issues you can come to know about it on time and you can do all the things necessary and it will be very efficient then maintenance is very important you should always have your uh, scripts reviewed updated and aligned with the evolving changes with of the application and project page object model again very important i have discussed about page object model multiple times we have also seen practically in our selenium java selenium python uh, videos we have also seen in cypress and playwright videos about page object model so here we keep our test scripts separate from our test repository and the actions on the objects and also we if we have test data we also keep the test data separate so whenever there are any changes in the application we only have to make changes at one place and we do not have to touch all the test scripts or we do not have to touch all the scripts where that object is used or where any interaction with that object or with that feature is involved so therefore page object model is very important then automated test data generation if you are working in some kind of a project or application which needs huge amount of data you can consider tools or techniques for automated test data generation now in case uh, you need a separate video on this how we do test data generation automated test data generation what are the tools techniques etc you can let me know in the comment section and i will create a separate video on that then using of dynamic locators again very important because your application is changing frequently if you are not using dynamic locators then they can break and then you will have to do all the manual efforts to add all the new locators so always use uh, object locators which are dynamic and which should not break on every change single or small change in the application so basically your locator should be able to adapt to the ui changes of your application then we have to uh, uh, monitor the logs you can keep an eye on the test execution logs for failures and what are the changes and then you can accordingly manage your automation scripts so these are the four scenarios i hope this was very useful if you have any other scenario or question you want me to discuss you can let me know in the comment section i will see you soon thank you for watching and never stop learning